Well, hello guys. This is the Betamax man, and uh, I went on eBay uh, about a week ago. Maybe it was about two weeks ago. I went on eBay, and I found uh, another uh, 450. And uh, because I ordered a 450. Uh, several several uh, weeks back and the guy sent me the wrong unit so he sent me an SL100 which had a voltage regulator uh, issue and we replaced it well this one's got the same problem um, so I'll show you so we hit power we get we do get a channel but that's all we get this uh, power supply is not fully working it's only getting partial power to certain areas so it's got a voltage regulator problem on this one as well um, the reasoning that there are so many the 450 and the 550 um, they were very well known for having um, voltage regulator failures the 450 was one of the worst ones the 450 and the SLH of R70 um, those two units they seem to have this issue is pretty common um it's it's a pretty common problem for the um mid to late 80s beta machines this has got a voltage regulator ic that has failed which is a stk 5441 uh, which is a sanyo made chip and what we're gonna do I do have a new chip um, on its way but it hasn't came yet so what I think I might do is so that we can do the repair on this thing I want to repair this um, Saturday so because my new chip had not come in yet I've decided to take a regulator out of one of my scrap machines uh, to put into this one because um, I, I have a, a scrap uh, SOH of 900 that I'm going to rob the regulator out of and put it into this one so that we can get this thing up and going so another issue as you can see when you hit the, the power that's all we get but anyway um, so basically the second issue there's two issues that happen with the SLH of 450s. One is the voltage regulator always fails. Number two, the head amplifier has bad capacitors. So bad caps in the head amplifier which causes the no video signal to the TV. A lot of times these particular models um, you can you hook them up with the RCA and you'll have sound but you won't have any video that's going to be an issue in the preamp but a lot of times what you can do is if you've got one of these models and you're having that issue hook it up with your RF cable the RF cable is a coaxial cable. Um, the RF will work. 
um, if you're not getting video from the RCA connectors you can use the co coaxial this machine is a very nice machine this is one of the uh, midline uh, models uh, this is the second or third SOH of 450 that I've had and the one the second one that I had the last one of these that I had actually had a problem in the uh, the preamp uh, circuitry so this is actually a midline unit this is a three head machine it has um, perfect pause it has frame by frame and it also has slow motion and in order to do these kind of features they need an extra head so there's one A head and two B heads so you've got um, your three heads one of your heads the third head is used specifically just for special effects so this was a expensive model uh, this one I paid more than I normally pay um, I paid around a hundred and forty dollars and that's usually higher than I'm willing to go usually I don't want to pay more than a hundred dollars including shipping so including shipping on this one I think I paid around 140 145 dollars and the actual part cost about 15 dollars so I've got roughly um, about a hundred and sixty dollars into this machine so really in order for me to sell this machine and get my money back and make a little bit of money on the side I will have to get at least two hundred and fifty uh, dollars for this machine uh, plus shipping so um, I'll charge you know sixty dollars shipping which is uh, sometimes it's a few dollars more but I don't mind losing a couple bucks on the shipping my main goal actually uh, is to um, sell refurbished repaired refurbished machines at a low cost of under 200 now sometimes I will sell them for 250 and this is going to be one of these models that I'm going to be selling for 250 dollars plus an additional 60 for shipping what I might do is I may sell it for 200 just because of the experience of having it and showing you guys how to repair this particular model and this is a common problem with the 711B chassis the 711B chassis was very popular it was a widely used it was a, a heavily used chassis this chassis was used from the mid 80s all the way up till the late 80s uh, they came out with the 711B3 chassis so the 711B3 chassis um, was a little bit different um, instead of a uh, loading uh, instead of a clutch system it was a um, just a a motor with 
a worm gear on it so they kind of got rid of the the clutch system and they kind of done it they done the the modes and stuff Betamax Sony Beta VCRs use solenoid switches and stuff to activate it so anyway but this is the three head unit and this one will be um, up for repair we're gonna repair the power supply and after we repair the power supply will take a look and see if it might have any other issues um, let's go ahead and pull the top off and we'll take a look inside well as we can see uh, in the inside this is extremely dusty extremely dirty so when I was untightening the screws the screws were really tight I mean they were it actually seemed like nobody had been into this machine um what I'm thinking is that this might be a unmolested Betamax um because of the tightness of the screws and because of so much dust that has accumulated in here I think what happened is that this VCR was working and it stopped working and then somebody just put it into a storage unit for many many years um, by the looks of the dirt and the dust you can look at the power supply there's an extremely uh, thick um, dust and, and dirt so we're gonna need to really do a good cleaning on this machine um, this is a very nice machine now this particular set of video heads the um and it's got the same connector on it the these heads were used also used on the uh slhf 600 um same um, same connector uh same video head drum connector same one uh same head i mean you can literally take this whole drum assembly out and put it into an SLH of 600 and it will work I'm pretty sure if I remember right even the connector is the same so where is the preamp you ask well I'm not quite sure because it's been a while it's been a while since I've done uh, a 400 but I would guess that the preamp would be somewhere on this board um, what I do see is I, I see um, capacitor drive drum drive um, system control uh, tuner uh, where's the servo on this one? Oh, here we go. Uh, well, that is, that's not, that's not the preamp. Never mind. Uh, where is the preamp on this one? Um, maybe the, the preamp might be on another board, actually. Yeah, look at that, huh? Wow, look at that dust. So the the preamp is probably on another board. Sometimes, um, sometimes the preamp is is on a different board. Sometimes they're on the top board. Sometimes they're on the bottom board in the middle. Um, and sometimes they'll be right here by the head. So a lot of times the head amplifier is right in here. 
um, but uh, this particular model it's on the circuit board so how do you find where the preamp is take your follow the trace the wires coming from the video head trace the wires from the video head and they will lead and they will go into the head amplifier so if you don't know where the head amp is you follow those wires and wherever this head is connected to is where your preamp is going to be also known as a head amp it can be called it can, it's called a head amp uh, sometimes it's called a preamp I mean there's two different names I just call it the head amp um, but look at the the amount of, of thick thick dust you know I'm actually this excites me because this means that this thing has probably never been worked on so I'm gonna be the first to work on it and I might be the last to work on it because I'm sure that this thing is going to work beautifully so that is the see that's the control amp uh, RF modulator which is right in here so I'm thinking that the head amp is going to be somewhere on the bottom board these you see these brown wires here these brown wires connect to the video head and if you trace them they're going in inside here underneath this board so the amp is going to be on the board rightly the board directly underneath this one and like I said you just trace the wires from the head and you'll find the head amplifier so and this one's got a, a peanut in it this thing was packed in uh, peanuts so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do a, a manual um, loading just to see if the mechanics are working so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'll show you how how you can do this so you'll need to push this this little tab here push down and then you can pull the cassette basket and I'm just going to do a manual uh, loading and unloading and uh, I want to see if mechanically if it works without power so manually loading and unloading uh, is going to tell me if this machine will most likely work after I repair the power supply so let let me show you where the regulator is on this one the regulator is right down in here and if you've seen my last previous videos you can see that chip right there the chip behind these two big caps um, that's the regulator I see right there so I'm going to manually uh, load this thing. So what you would do is you would, uh, this is a clutch mechanism. So it goes, this activates a certain gear, a loading procedure, and then this kicks in and switches over to the other gear and then it does the other loading procedure it'll do two things it'll put the cassette into the machine it'll switch to the secondary gears it'll thread the tape and then the solenoid will engage and it will play so 
the tape will go in so I'm gonna get the loading process started and then I'll I'll try to film the manual loading process so I gotta hold the the tab over like that and then I can move the belt and that will move the cassette basket so that will so we'll just load the basket so when you put the cassette in the basket is down when you put the cassette in this arm stays over on this side so this gear is what um, stays locked in the position. The gear that puts the basket inside the machine is actually this gear set over here. So now that we've, um, this is finished loading the cassette, it'll go, it'll now switch over. And now, what we can do is this gear, this set of gears, will we'll start to thread. As you can see, now we're threading the tape around the drum. I basically just want to see and make sure that the threading procedure is working without being... Uh, without hanging up or anything like that. Most likely this machine will start working. So now that that is now completely loaded and the tape threads around there and the pinch roller pulls the tape on the other side, it pulls it forward and the pinch roller engages and presses the tape up against the capstan and the capstan turns the capstan is what controls the tape speed so now if we want to reverse the process um, we simply just go ahead and do the reverse we can now reverse it And you'll see that the this uh, spring-loaded tape guides that pop up. So it's all spring-loaded, and as you can see, so it'll switch back to its other set of gears once this is finished um, un unloading the tape. So now the tape is back into the uh, cassette. Uh, theore theoretically, uh, in theory. So now, this planetary gear set will switch over to the other side. And now, I can turn the belt and bring my basket back up. So I'm going to do that. You'll see how the, the basket is starting to come back up. So this will, will stay over on this side. So basically what it's doing is it's locking this set of gears so that this set can finish the unloading procedure with the cassette. Alright, so it's unloaded now. And the Betamax Kitty has decided to join us momentarily. Hey baby girl. Maui. Maui. Hi. You want to come and see me? No? Okay. She's, she's over there exploring the box. Hey baby girl. Come here. Come here. Yeah. Come here baby girl. I love you, baby girl.
Yeah. I love you, Maui. Yeah, she's such a cute kitty. Come on. Here you go. Okay, so she's decided to help us here. Yeah. Okay, so now by doing the uh, loading procedure, uh, basically that tells me that mechanically this machine works. And it also tells me that there's no issues with the cassette housing. On a lot of these chassis, the cassette housing, um, there's a, a plastic gears that usually they either crack or they break or the teeth sometimes can be sheared off, uh, causing the tape to lift up on the one side. Um, and so if you've got an issue where your tape is not being lifted up on both sides if one side is kind of down that means you've got a broken gear uh, or you've got a cracked gear if a gear is cracked um, it will cause uh, issues because the gear will start to split and come out like that and because it's under tension and it's spring loaded and it's under tension so with it being cracked it can't do the job so now we do know that this thing is is working mechanically so I bet you once we repair the power supply um, this thing will uh, fire up so for now I'm going to leave the screws out of it because I'm going to be going back into this machine on Saturday. We might work on this a little bit Friday night. It depends on how tired I am. Um, I'm a custodian at the school, so I get off around midnight. And uh, so sometimes... If I'm really tired or, or uh, just feeling really fatigued, uh, I will wait to work on it until Saturday. But it might be a possibility I might start working on this thing um, on uh, Friday. So anyway, um, that is kind of how the machine works so that's how you can test the mechanical parts if the uh, you know power supply is not working and you want to see if you fix the power supply will it work mechanically and we know that yes this will mechanically work providing that the solenoid uh, switch is engaging this thing should play a tape once we repair the power supply so anyway thank you for watching and uh i i would very much appreciate if you would hit the like and subscribe button and i will make more videos in the future so we're gonna do a uh, repair on this machine on Saturday. So, see you later. Bye-bye.